Hello again and welcome to the final of the three survival modes in Advanced Wars DS. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for time survival. Yeah, that wasn't funny. Um, I consider time survival to be the best out of the three survival modes because the resource that you're limited in cannot be generated or taken advantage of by any of the COs. Like, none of them use real time in their powers or anything, so you can actually use any COs you want and make up any strategy you want. I've actually seen a variety of ways to get through some of these maps, but um, the COs that I'm going to use, I'm going to use the most broken strategy in the game. Like, when you take skills into account, I think this is the best pair in the entire game. Kanbei and Sonya. Now, with Kanbei, I'm just basically stacking a bunch of defenses on him. He's got the two skills that give direct fire defense, so indirects are still kinda, sorta a weakness. He's got star power, so his power meter fills up faster, and Pathfinder is going to be very important for these maps. So, in addition to the defense boost from Kanbei and his skills, Sonya is going to be, well, she's mostly going to be in the back on the bench because, like, you want to keep Kanbei out in front for most of this mode. So she's got the skills that give her partner more attack and defense while she's on the bench. And she's also got Pathfinder and Star Power as backups. Uh, their dual strike is also very, very good, especially considering that when it ends, Sonya's out with counter break, so that's pretty cool. But for the most part, it's going to be Kanbei out in front. Now, in time survival, the timer only starts ticking down when it's your turn. When it's the enemy's turn, or if you've got a power animation going, the timer is not decreasing, so I imagine that I'm mostly going to be talking during enemy turns, and not during my turn, because i got to click through stuff quickly. If I start talking, then I'll be spending time, and I want to get through this as quickly as possible. So, on the count of three, let's begin. Three, two, one, begin! First map is, uh, well, basically, you just uh, take all these mechs and suicide them on the Neo Tank. <laughs> That's basically all you do. Yeah, even with Kanbei defense, this isn't, uh, they don't exactly live all that long. Oh, that's unfortunate. I was hoping that the uh, mech would, wow, I did no damage there. How strange. Alright, so it does, it usually takes two turns in order to beat this. Maybe there's a way to do it in one turn if you've got, like, enough firepower, but I don't know. I was actually a bit unlucky. Come on. The touchpad is actually the preferred control method for this mode because uh, you can move a lot faster if you use the touch screen. With the cursor, you have to drag it across the screen and everything, and it takes a while. I like their win quotes, by the way. They're very amusing win quotes. <laughs> so maybe pause if you want to hear that. Right, first map is down, and I've probably only used like 30 seconds off my time. Does it show how much is left? No, oh, 32 seconds. Okay. So for this map, um, I'm basically just going to blow through the pipes to get those to those artillery as quickly as possible. Oh, the Neo Tank actually couldn't get through in time, so. Kanbei actually needs another boost in order to get through. Alright, so no using the Neo Tank. I guess it could. If those artillery, like, get into the corner of that forest, then I could use the Black Bomb. Not that it would matter much. And why not? Oh, that's, that's putting the Neo Tank in range. No, cancel. All right, that's better. That that could actually ca cause them to join. I hope it... Yeah, it does. So that actually saves a turn. And saving turns is still good. You just have to weigh saving turns and saving clicks. Because saving clicks is more important. But less turns means less clicks. All right, this third map is actually tricky. Because... You don't want to blitz through it as quickly as possible. You have to actually, like, take your time. Which is not good in, sur in time survival mode. But, you'll see what I mean. You only get... You're up against Slash and you only get two tanks. And the enemy has all of this and a black crystal. So even though you've got black bombs that you're obviously supposed to use to cripple them... The thing is... 
if you move too quickly, then... Like, they're not gonna be far enough away from the crystal, so let's... I'm gonna take a couple of turns to try and get them away from the crystal first. And this is where Pathfinder comes in handy, because of course you're going to be moving through these woods. Let's just end turn again. The anti-airs are no threat to you, you just have to make sure that your black bombs aren't left waiting. So I don't know if that's far enough. It probably is. Alright, so black bomb number one. You're gone. And unfortunately, they're kind of blockading black bomb number two from getting in there. Like, I could go from here, but that's not the most ideal spot to explode. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and do it. And then with the massive amount of firepower that Canvey has, uh, we can... Oh, that was insanely lucky. Of course, Canvey and Sonya have the highest luck boost coming from their tag. So I'll stay on the forest. I guess I should do this. And next turn, the final black bomb will explode. I didn't want to damage my own units with a black bomb, because you, you definitely don't want to do that. And hopefully they join more than they try to get into the crystal. Because if I had exploded a turn sooner, then they would have been able to just get into back into the range of the crystal, and that would have been... Well, that's not close enough. And that would have been disastrous. Let's first try and get rid of the units furthest away from these guys. And check to make sure that I'm not exploding in range of my own units. Oh good, I got him too. Why did they do that? Like, the AI is not supposed... They're, they're actually supposed to avoid engagements if they deem it's not worth it. Like, if they're taking too much counterattack damage or they're not doing enough damage. Like, I've got all of the defense boosts. So much so that, like, uh, a Neo tank attacking my medium tank would only really do 30 damage. And that sounds crazy, but that's that's Kanbei with all of the defensive skills. It really is crazy. Oh, yeah, this is one of the troubles of playing this mode. Because the AI likes to stall. But this should, um... There's nothing for them to hide behind, I think. Yeah, so they just stay there. And that's how you do map three. Still plenty of time on the clock. And uh, they've given the same win quote three times. Is there only, like, one win quote for pairs of COs? Like, the special pairs? It'd be weird. I don't remember this at all. What is this? Uh, oh. So these units can't do anything at all. Um. Yeah, you basically just have to build some indirects and then um, get them in there as quickly as possible. So this is where... This is probably where a Prairie Dog, the skill that lets you uh, have one movement cost on planes, that would have come in handy, because I can get rockets in there way quicker. And they are Kanbei rockets, so that's a bit of an issue, too. But not to worry, I should have them covered rather quickly. And I'm just capturing the Comm Tower for even more attack power. Man, that's a lot of damage! And if I had gotten lucky, that would have been a one-shot. I think I will get a medium tank, too. Just in case I need to do some direct combat. Now look at these guys using the rocket blind spots. See, there we go. That's a one-shot. A lucky one-shot. doesn't really matter that I'm using Kanbei to buy the units, if you ask me. Okay, so the battleship is definitely going down at this point. There's nothing it can do. There's probably nothing the lander can do either. Oh, good. Good of them to make Andy the enemy CO so that he can 
stall for even more time. But you can see that the clock is not running down during his turn. Oh, look at these landers, they're going into the blind spots and it's so annoying. Hey, wait a minute, Andy, how did you get all those units into that tiny lake anyways? There's no port. <laughs> I had to sneak that little joke in at some point. Alright, this should be fine. There we go. That's map n number four. And I'm hoping to do this in half an hour so that it's not another two-parter. Survival mode playthroughs should not be two-parters. And next we have... a stealth mission. Isn't it weird how the enemy is Sammy in a stealth mission? Now, I just kind of think Sammy reminds me of Solid Snake, to be honest. Because um, of the headband and the fact that... Uh, she infiltrates HQs. Alright, so this is going to be troublesome. Wait a minute, I'm Kanbei. What am I thinking? This is going to be a bit risky, but let's just plow on through. I'm not going to play your stealth game. You know how much damage you do to me? Oh, okay, that's a, that's a lot of damage. Um, I changed my mind. I think I will play the stealth game. But I have Pathfinder, so I'll hide in the woods, because... In Dual Strike, the enemy actually obeys the Fog of War rules. Well, in the in the other games, you can hide in force as well. Alright, so luckily that did not ruin the run. So I hope this HQ capture goes without a hitch. Like, you can see that all of the subs, those are basically there so that Sammy can actually see you when you're not in the forests. Because they actually obey vision rules now. And we have a dual strike ready. I'm not sure when I'm going to use it. So that was a bit of a silly map. But it does challenge you to think, even though that's exactly the opposite of what I did. Alright, so there are different win quotes for the pairs of COs. And now on to number six, the middleman. Oh boy. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we've got um, we've got a crystal here. I probably should get rid of the crystal. I think I can do that with just two artillery. And I'll save up some cash for a rocket. That might come in handy. I don't really need to destroy any of the mini cannons, I think, but the crystal's important to get rid of. Oh, of course, it's a uh, sandstorm, so I'm actually... I actually do need that rocket eventually. Or to blow up one of the, um... Cannons. Okay. So do I have the money for the rocket yet? No. I mean, I could ship away at these two Neo Tanks, but the last one is going to be out of range no matter what. So there's one down. This other one should go down soon. I'm going to fire at this cannon, because they're inventions. I can destroy them in two hits. Then I just go up and uh, do this. See, with all those skills and power-ups, 51 against a Neo Tank, and it's not even going to fire back at me because it's... Um, it knows it's just going to take a lot of damage because it can't really do that much to me. Unfortunately, Hawk is now in save for the superpower mode. Like, um, he could have used his regular power to stall me out for a little bit more, but his AI wouldn't let him. Alright, next up... Map number seven? Uh, yeah, number seven. Stealth fight. Well, it's a stealth fight, alright. 
And this is going to be difficult because the snow and the fact that your stealths actually burn up a lot of fuel, that's going to make this map hurt a little bit. But as long as we eliminate the uh, aircraft carriers, I think we'll be okay. So, they, so the APC can go on the bridge. I'm going to hide. And none of the enemy units can fire at the stealths, by the way. There's no way for that to happen. So the attack power might actually come in handy here. Oh, the battleship is trying to get at my APC, however, because if that blows up, then I'm in trouble. Uh, you know what? I think this is the map where you want to dual strike. So here we go. This probably looks really weird because I've got the top screen on the right in the window. Battle standard. So this tag break gives all of my units plus 30 on top of anything that Canbay's super gives. So look at this. Look at this. Like 80, 60 against these cruisers. It's nuts. Let's go ahead and get rid of the battleship while we're at it. I'm getting a second turn, so switch over to Sonya now. And counter break doesn't really mean a whole lot here, but I am able to just attack everything again. So that's what I'm going to do. And we should be able to... Oh, he's going to use his super, so that might actually be uh, dangerous because... Well, actually, not really. This isn't Drake. I was thinking of Drake. Oh, the medium tank actually came off the HQ. I don't know why it did that, because now I'm just going to blow it up. Yeah, I'll just drop the infantry. There's no real need for that, um... No real need for the T-Copter to be there anymore, so I think I should be uh, charging up my powers again by losing as many units as possible, because they still transfer from one, one map to the next. It's really nice. I have a feeling the stealths are all going to crash at this point. So I'm going to get all that I can out of them. I've actually used up a lot of my time. It's weird. Also, I should really switch to Canbay again, but next map. I didn't realize it until, until uh, I had already taken the HQ. Oh, and there's actually different quotes depending on who is in the lead. But there's a lot of detail surrounding this dual strike mechanic, to be honest, even though it's completely overpowered. Map number eight, Tactical Decoy. Okay, this is definitely a very important map to have Pathfinder on, because you have to get through that tiny little forest, and Javier has, like, all of these silos and everything. So what I have to do is I have to use, basically, uh these tanks through here as quickly as possible. Uh, 16,000, 32,000, 48,000. I think he's going to go for the most money damage he can inflict. So if the rockets are over here, it's like 30,000, 58,000. Big money. So it looks like this should be pretty okay. And and swap to Canby because Sonia's got a full meter now, so no reason for her to stay out in front. Alright, it's working so far. And if I destroy any of the infantry, I can uh, stop them from firing again and again and again. Which is good. I think I let them fire it too much at once. Yeah, one silo is coming for me. Oh, and of course he's going to stall me out as much as possible. Nice going, Javier. You're real, like, not cowardly. Okay, this is, this is actually pretty bad. 
Uh, this is still at full health, so if I get lucky... Okay, that's good. So this might be troublesome, but at least he can't really build any more units, right? But he's got nothing that he can do that with. But he's still got three infantry, so here comes a silo, which hits himself. Nice going, buddy. I've still got two tanks. I'm not worried. Canvay tanks are overpowered. Uh, I may have played this way incorrectly. At least I got rid of one of them. He can only fire two silos now. And I, I need this tank to come down here. I need, I need its help desperately. Make it an 8 HP tank. They should go for the rockets, if nothing else, though. And his powers don't matter. I don't have any indirect units, so it doesn't really matter. There's one of them. There's the other. I'm going to lose a medium tank here. Oh, look at him. He's still trying to block me. It's so weird. Uh, block the silo so that he can't use it, and let's hope for the best. Because the tank is going to make it down here eventually. There's definitely a better way to do this map. Oh no, the silo's over here. Oh jeez. Uh, he can hit me down here now, so I don't know what to really do about it. Oh, he's still going for those guys up there? That's really strange. Is like 1 HP of medium tank worth it compared to 3 HP of a tank? I don't And I've misclicked, which is even worse. So that's cool. But I should be able to handle this eventually. I'm using up way more time than I should. Oh boy. These guys are scaring me. Can I get rid of this infantry here and now? With luck? Okay, cool. That was risky. So yes, if you're gonna play survival mode, find a better way to do that than I did. Like, maybe make two groups of units so that he has to waste more silos and not use as many medium tanks on him. That took a good, like, three minutes of time. But, we are on to map 9, which means there are only three more left. Last stand. Oh, okay, it's just a bunch of colon units, so it's really not that interesting. I think with all this defense I've got that the mech on the mountain will actually be completely invincible. Let's see if that holds true. I'm gonna set up like this. The rocket's gonna be able to shoot at stuff. And I just have to wait for all of his units to just walk right up to me and uh, start whacking at him. Hey, come to think of it, how do you do this with any other CO, by the way? Because this is really, like, a low amount of stuff to work with. Oh yeah, they're not even firing at my guys. Does he have any money? He doesn't have any money, so power of money is actually useless here. I don't know why they put colon here. I guess it's a handicap for how many enemies there are. So his indirects can chip at me. That's probably not um, a huge worry. The 
I've got mega tanks. I've got. Oh, left it at one health. Oops. Yeah, here comes the zero gold power of money. I don't feel like dual striking at the moment, so just gonna chip away at these guys more and more. I should probably get into the cities at some point, because those artilleries are chipping at me. Maybe take them out first, if you're playing this yourself. With a rocket, of course. Uh, the APC is going to be fine. The worst they can do is get into the rocket's blind spot. Wow, one HP artillery managed to do one HP of damage to the Kanbei Neo Tank. That's so crazy. And it's a colon artillery, too. So that was probably just plain luck on his part. So yes, complications aside, I really do consider this a unique game mode to play in. But like with the other survival modes, like when you beat it once, you basically know all of the maps now. It's not... there's no variance to it. Okay, that was a bit lucky. So only two more maps now. I think this is going to be a one-parter. So that's good for me, too. Lash again on Pursuit Planes. What do you need Calm Towers for, Lash? Alright, this is gonna be... Uh, what should I do here? I've got a Dual Strike ready, so I could use that. I mean, it's not like I can make any... Um... I'm spending too much time thinking. Okay, let's just Dual Strike. I think this is a situation where I need it. It's gonna be a really weak dual strike, but whatever. Like maybe I could have waited a turn or something, I don't know. Do I have money for an APC? I do. Let's get... Why do you have Navy units on this map? That's so strange. I just have to stop as many of them as possible from getting to the crystal. And, um, load you up. That was lucky. So now the APC can get ahead of these guys. They're going to be going for the crystals. I'm just going to go straight for their HQ. I have no idea how you would play this without doing what I'm doing. Please don't block the road. I can blow some of them up just in case this strategy goes awry, or whatever the pronunciation of the word is. Awry. Uh, something like that. I need an anti-air just in case. This crystal is actually only going to boost the fighter. That's really weird. Ah, oh, yes, the stealth hid with one health left. I don't think there's anything they can really do, because the HQ is going to give the, that infantry a lot of defense. I think it's actually at 100 defense, considering all the skills and everything else. So, this could be a win right away. And even if it's not a win, it's probably like a, a three-turn capture. Ah, uh, yeah, for sure, a three-turn capture. Yeah, I didn't want to think about whether to dual strike or not for too long, so 
I think I made the right play there. Oh, that was close. How did that happen? Well, it's still a cap. And with one more map remaining, I have nine minutes to do it. So the final map is going to be... a grid map. Okay, what am I looking at? Hmm. Well, it's fairly obvious I want to go up to the HQ with the black boat, so let's put this here. And that... And that, if I remember right, that should be all I need. I'm gonna launch a silo at the enemies up here, because I know he built something. Like, this probably doesn't really hurt them too much, because they're gonna recover some health, but we'll see. Alright, so put the mech on the HQ. And that should give me the win. Oh yeah, that's definitely gonna give me the win now. Like, there's probably no way that the tank can... It didn't even do any damage. <laughs> it probably has... It probably doesn't have 100 defense. Probably has like 95 or something. But that's all survival mode cleared. Unfortunate that that last map was not really climactic at all, but there you go. That's time survival cleared, and I have... how much time left? About 9 minutes. So I took 16 minutes to beat everything. That's pretty good. Oh, it's only an A rank? Do you need to do it a little bit faster for an S rank? That's really weird. I did not know you could get anything other than an S rank in survival modes, but there you go. Alright, so that's all of the survival modes clear. I don't know what I'm going to do next for Advanced Wars, because I've beaten the survival modes, I've beaten all of the campaigns. Uh, well, there are a couple of hard campaigns I haven't done, but I'm not interested in that. So, uh, I'll have to do some thinking about what to do next, and I'll see you for whatever that is. Later, everybody!